What's up YouTube and welcome to BFD Garage. I'm Junior Burrell and today we're going to be building shit. Uh, as a disclaimer, this is not a how-to video. Uh, that's not my goal. That's not my angle. Um, so take what I do and use it at your own discretion. I'm not responsible for my actions or your actions. Um, but today I'm going to uh, start building the firewall for my 1926 hot rod I've been working on. And John come along and we'll see what happens. Uh, this is my 1926 hot rod, uh, or my Model T Coupe. It's still all original 26 steel, except for a few patch panels in the corners. Um, and the additive of like this trim piece I made to cover up uh, the factory lip to where it had the... There's a word. I can't... Provisions. That's the word. Uh, the provisions for like the, the cloth gasket that went under the hood. I won't be running a hood. Um, because it's a hot rod, it's not a rat rod, so fuck you if you think that. The, um, I'm building more for safety and function and for speed. So, in my style, uh, I like it to be a little rough, a little obnoxious. Things I build for other people are usually really pretty and polished. Uh, so you'll get to kind of see a contrast of what I personally like compared to what I do for other people. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to uh, compromise the way it's built, I just want everything to have kind of a rough edge to it. Uh, so I'm gonna start on the firewall and I still have to build all the toe boxes inside, but you know, I needed to make a YouTube video. So like, you know, that ain't as interesting in my opinion. Uh, that's pretty technical, granted. But I'm gonna build the, uh, my firewall will be aluminum and I'm gonna rivet it all the way around this lip I made. And then there'll be a seam here and I'll bead roll the lips to go uh, one under the other and then it'll have rivets there because I like that kind of air aircraft look and I like to use a lot of aluminum because I want to keep everything as light as possible and then later and if I get a chance to film it because I suck at filming when I'm by myself and today I have my beautiful wife behind the camera say hi beautiful wife hi beautiful wife good job uh, <laughs> she's a smart ass also that's why we've been together so <laughs> she gets it sometimes a little too much but, uh, but I'm gonna start building I gotta build me a template Or if you're from somewhere else, you might say template. But I'm gonna keep my comments to myself. Nobody uses template. No, people actually say template. I, I've seen it. And since my, I like to use poster board, and since it wasn't long enough, I taped on an extra piece. And then I get this taped up. Oh. This is not going too well. Huh? You mind your own damn business. There we go. What I should have done is get an idea of how tall it is so I can trim off the excess piece that flaps. So I'll go. I got to drop it down around these tubes. So I got about five and a half, and I'll go ahead and whack me off. Seven inch piece. I'll be back. That's more like it. I gotta start across here. And making the piece, this is gonna be the easy template. Make sure you can get it pretty tight across there. And the more time you fuck the son of a let's just excuse me. Motherfucker! <laughs> Still wanna stay up for him. I know. That's what she said. All the time. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's bullshit. I'm just playing on you. Mm. 
I'm gonna guesstimate. Now that this is an inch and a quarter, so I have an inch and a quarter, and and I don't want to. I, I could go five eighths and be half, but with the angle, that shit changes. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to it, and I gotta oblong it a bit. And like, and I could cheat and figure out this angle in relation to zero, and then chop me a piece off, and then have me actual true piece. But uh, I'm just gonna wing it, and see what happens. Look like, at that. Like it because it's just paper. And if I can't get it for just eyeballing it, I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing it. When I try to get too technical and overthink shit, it doesn't go the way I want to. And I just get pissed off and eyeball it anyway. So we're just gonna start with the eyeball. And I might have to find me something. Uh, oh yeah, I got some pieces of inch and a quarter. And then when my wife comes over here, you know, you gotta excuse her, she's short. She's only like five foot. She says five one, but that's that's not the truth. I am five one. It uh, told you. And because it's you know at an angle, I can math it and do all that shit. But I'm just going to add a half of an inch. And I mean, that looks like a lot. I'm going to add three eighths of an inch. And I can always trim off the bottom. So it's always good to go a little long and then shorten it up. As long as you got something straight. I'm gonna take my inch in a culture. And because I know about where it is, I can even that out, line it up. And, I'm gonna, and because I, you know, my my square wasn't perfect because of the location, I just split the difference, and I go from about half the tube to about the other side of the half of the tube, and then because. This was cut straight. I can use my square to even it up and know exactly where I'm going to cut it. But you just stay right there. I'm getting my square. See, I'm back. Now I can... Come square off those lines. Boo yeah. I got some scissors somewhere. We need thing music. That's terrible. It is terrible. I got sound effects. We got. Uh, we have no budget. That make do. Shit seems to fit. Now I gotta get it all the way backed up, flush, and take this one over again. Man, 
Man, I got lucky. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. short on this side and so I need to take my tape and use the tape to create the excess the excess I'll take my trusty sharpie hold it and it's going to be a little bigger than you want because of the how the Sharpie gets in there. But I'll show you what I do with that deal too. Just take the one. Fucking back and forth. I'm gonna add me a piece. A poster board to make up for what I'm missing. I can cut through my tape to get my little extra piece that I missed. template and now I don't want to do this and I may trim it off the final piece because when it's when it's actual a piece of steel you get a lip to put your finger on and then you can kind of freeze your hand and then come all the way around it but it's hard when it's just fucking paper I'm using how my finger is pushed into the, the, the crotch of the Sharpie. The what of that Sharpie? The crotch. I'm sorry, people. She's inappropriate. He loves it. Possible.
and set up my next template, I'm gonna have to get an idea of the inside and what I need. So, 14 and a half. I have to make this bigger. Since I was, you know, granted I eyeballed it, but it looks about half. So I can take this and then flip this around. And then line up that line and those marks. And then trace it out. She's like, oh, I didn't know you was that smart. Wow. Alrighty. I can cut these out before I start. I don't have to try to put it under and then figure all that out. It puts my templates where I want them to be. Because this is a 69 model block I'm using for uh, mock-up, it has a bolt hole here, which the later models don't have a bolt hole. They just have the six, the, the two down low on each side and the one on each side of the top. So I think, cause you wanna, you, you gotta imagine once it's all put together, you wanna be able to unbolt the transmission and the engine. Mm -hmm. And granted, you can take it all out as one piece, uh, but because I'll be running a mid plate, if I can unbolt it and just pull the motor out, I can leave the transmission in place and have and let the, the pins and the bolts uh, do, or say if I wanted to pull the transmission out, the pins in the motor keeps the motor, the back of the motor in the right place because the pins are going through it. And then if I want to leave the transmission there, I can put a longer bolt in it, pull the transmission forward, unscrew it from the block and let the bolts keep the transmission in place. So, you know, it's, it's, it makes things easier and faster if you're having to do repairs to your engine. And because I plan on, you know, racing the car, I'm gonna fuck some shit up. You know, it's not when, it's if. And <laughs> nothing wears out, it breaks. 
So, you know, the easier it is to swap some shit in and out, the easier life is. And I want to keep at least probably, you know, an inch and a half in between all the bolt holes and the actual piece that's going on top of it to make the tunnel to power the transmission. Transmission. So from the center, and, and that, that is actually a good piece to measure. So right there, I've got seven and a half down. So we'll pull an inch off of that and make six and a half down. And then come over. Then we'll go five inches on either side. So we'll go five plus See, that's nine and a quarter. So we'll go seven and three quarter down at this point. And because the engine is centered in the chassis, everything I do on one side, I should be able to do the same thing on the other side and it ends up in the same place. Let me figure this still out. So we'll go nine inches. Nine and a That's 12 and a half minus it will be 11. And so that'll be my, my doom, my doom. And it can go straight to that point. So from here to there, that'll be 15 and a quarter. Extra for that. And that was the. So we'll do 17 and a quarter there. And then I gotta figure out this deal. And so I know the outside of my frame, to outside of my frame should be. 27 inches. So I can figure that out. You know, let's go back to the other template and start transferring. And I have to remember that when I actually make this piece, I'm going to have to add an inch to this to have the piece that bends under the bead road to go back behind this. And so let me. Go that there. So that way I don't get going and I trace this out and I cut it out and I waste a piece of material. That would be bad. Yeah. And I don't know, with all the shit going on right now, material ain't cheap. So I got my six and a half here. I'm gonna go five inches over. And I'm gonna go seven and three quarter down. I need to go nine over. I'm just gonna put this down and I was gonna go over. Is that 11? I need to go 11 down. And then from 
fifteenth of the quarter. Alright. I need to I need to go thirteen and a half this way. That's the outside of my frame. the outside of my frame. And that's how I can, I can imagine it. Seventeen and a quarter. Because everything should be pretty symmetrical. You notice I didn't do nothing on this side. Right. So try to make this cut really good. And I can take this and put this here. And 
this up and everything. As best as it'll fit. And then Boom shakalaka. All right. I think. But I think the bead has to, I don't add. I think this is bullshit. I shouldn't add. I think I'm going to have to bead roll in this. No, I do have to add. This, goes, this one goes away. And it adds on to this side. But. I got to think if I want to see the bead roll. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want it to be a flush. I want it to just look like a flush and just a line. Because uh, I plan on having rivets across to match the rivets to go all the way around. Mm -hmm. Or if I, it'd probably be cleaner to not see the lip. I wouldn't want to see the lip. Yeah, but the lip has to be on this side. Mm. So now let's go see if all my, uh, my bullshit works out. Hopefully, it was right. Because it went right. This will come up under here or something. Do what I want it to. Voila. Mm. I can check that out. Perfect. Look at your measurements. It lined up on the frame and everything the way I want it to. Yeah, it's perfect. And also I gotta think of how I'm gonna bead roll it. Cause I want a, like a pattern bead roll. And then also like my distributor is like super close. Move this shit up a little. Down in that deal. 
Then I gotta get my my disturber cap. Still going? Yep. Let me see how close. I'm gonna kind of just. This isn't the actual distributor I will be using, but I can center my cap up on it to get a, get a rough idea. idea. Huh? Get an idea. Well, yeah, and I need so much above it. Son of a. Oh, I, got, I, got, I got another one. All right. I'll get back in a minute. So I'm gonna raise this up for my wires to about two here and then probably about an inch somewhere around the inch somewhere and Gotta start about right there and get a mark on it. Get a mark on it. Um, not get that all trimmed up and, and now here comes like this is the easier part. It's straightforward. It's just a bunch of measurements and figuring shit out. But now I want it to look a certain way. So now I gotta figure out the design I want. So now I want to have a bead row. I gotta figure out if I want my bead row to match all this or to just be in the inside. And then if I want two bead rows, one big section, three sections, and then make it match, you know, this part over here. And whatever this, how this ends up, I gotta, you know, I gotta make those match. Because originally when I got the car, it was on a different chassis and it was like a 103 inch wheelbase. And I tried to make it work, but I got this, I got this car from my cousin who's 20 years older than I am. Uh, more, he's more like an uncle. And uh, he gave it to me and he built it in the eighties. And it was like rat rod style and it had a, a model T, uh, a T bucket frame and suspension off a of 76 Oldsmobile cause he, somebody gave him a total uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass. So he took all the pieces he had, he put it together and he drove it for a while and eventually all that geometry and physics because the spring rate was like way too stiff for the weight of the car and blah 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 but it became unsafe when he gave it to me i tried to correct it but it was impossible because everything was so far apart uh, so i built a, a a new frame like a 2011 the new chassis and i used a mustang 2 front end off of an actual 76 mustang because uh, i can get the right spring rates and the suspension itself is you know about half the weight of a 76 cutlass and I got a nine inch with ladder bars in the back and I can adjust for the spring rates on it. But when I laid the car out and I built the new chassis, I moved the motor back six inches and extended the wheels forward 10 inches uh, to get the weight back here and to have more stability with the longer wheelbase. Well, because of, you know, uh, the relationship to the rear, the rear tires and the front of the nose, now the motor sucked up real close. And then, you know, if the motor was two inches forward or at least an inch and a half forward It'd make the firewall easy, but it'd also put more weight on the front of the car and take weight off the rear of the car, which I'm gonna need my traction at. So that's why I'm in this place now. In the predicament that you're in. Yeah, I'm in the predicament. So now I gotta do some thinking. Yes, you do. Yeah, but the templates are made. So if you wanna know how to make templates, well then, you know, oh yeah. Now we know. The uh, Now I gotta decide if this video is going to include the actual aluminum that I'm going to build the firewall out of, or if are you getting fucking templates? You know I mean, <laughs> who knows? Uh, tune in to somewhere. Uh, bye.